Hello there. In this video, I'm going to go over some basics with QLab, which includes setting it up and getting started with it. So QLab is a piece of software and it's downloadable from the internet. The free version is okay, but I thoroughly recommend purchasing a full license. There are three basic license types. There's an audio one, a video, and a lighting one. Now for the vast majority, an audio license will be sufficient. This is currently purchasable for $399, which is about 310 pounds. And this gives you all the audio features for life. The license allows you to install and use QLab on three different computers. And QLab only runs on Mac computers, not Windows or any other machines. Figure 53, the company who make QLab, offer educational discounts. So if you're in an education establishment, the drama department will be able to get a discount on this. So after QLab is downloaded, click on the QLab icon, which could be down here in the dock or a desktop shortcut. Click on that and open it up. Here we are in QLab. So what we want to do here is click on new workspace on the left and that opens up a new workspace. So before we start putting in sound cues, there's a couple of settings to set up first. We can access the settings by clicking on this cog down here in the bottom right, or by pressing command and comma to open up settings. For now, let's just click on this and open up our settings. So I would recommend here in this box, the minimum time required between each go to be not 0 seconds, but instead 0 0.5 seconds. So I've just typed in 0 0.5 seconds there and then clicked off. And I'll come back to this a little bit later. Next, click on Q templates over on the left hand side. Click on group if it's not already selected. Then click on the mode tab here. Then click on timeline, start all children simultaneously. Then come over here to the bottom right and click done. So a thing I recommend because it's how I was taught and it's the professional standard is to use groups in QLab. So each sound cue is in its own group. To make a new group, click on this stack of squares in the top left, that adds a new group, or we can press command and zero on the keyboard and that is adding a new group. If I want to get rid of those, I can just press Command Z and it undoes what I just did. Next, let's put our sound file in that we want to play. With the sound file, you will need to have the actual file on your computer. So this might be an MP3, an M4A, a WAV or an AIFF audio file. You can't use a track in QLab that isn't physically on your computer. So something like a piece of music from Apple Music or Spotify. I'm going to open the folder where the sounds are and here I have a telephone sound effect I want to use. So here's the folder and I'm going to drag it, click on it and drag it into QLab just like this. There we go and I've clicked and dragged it in. So unfortunately I didn't quite get it in the group. So if it's on its own, it's not within the green boxes. It means it's not in the group. So I'm going to click on that and then drag it. So it goes into the group. There we are. So it's within the green uh, border. So it means it's in the group. What I can do is I can click on the, t on the top of this group and I can press Q to rename it. I could also double click and it turns into a text icon or I can, when it's highlighted, I can press Q to rename it. So I'm going to rename it clearly with a number. So Q001 uh, phone ring. And I can also, with uh, this Q, I can also give uh, put in a handy little note. So maybe the Q line for when to play the sound cue. You hopefully will have this in a script, but if you don't, we can just put this on here as a little helpful reminder. So Alex's line saying, when I say, how are you? We hit go on the phone ringing. So there we are, we've got a number, a name, and the cue all in the title there. What we can do now is open up the active cue list on the right hand side. So we can do this either by clicking on this little image down here on the bottom right, or we can press command and L to open it up. Then this little window on the right 
turns up and we can click on active cues. This is what we want to be able to see because this is going to tell us what's playing when. We play the cue. I'm going to just double click at the top of the window just to make it a bit bigger. There we go. We can play the cue by clicking on the top of the group and pressing space bar. And there we go. There is our phone ringing. Now we can press escape to stop that cue. Or if we want to, we can double tap escape for it to do a thing called a hard stop. So it won't fade it out. It will just stop it suddenly. So we've got the cue in there, but now I need to put in a cue to stop that sound. So I want to put in a stop cue. So click on stop at the top here and make sure it's in a new group. So what we could do is we could add a new group first by pressing up here. There we are. We've added in a new group. Then we can press stop and that adds in a stop cue. Unfortunately, it hasn't put it into the group. So what we can do is click on that stop cue, drag it up and there we are. And it's into cue two. So I've clicked on it and I've dragged it in there and there we are. So let's re first of all, rename this cue stop phone. And then we can put uh, on pickup. So we know when the person picks up the phone, we hit this cue. So now we need to tell the stop cue what to actually stop. So what we can do is we can drag the target cue down into the stop cue. So now it knows what it's doing. Now I can play the ring sound effect and then I can hit stop to stop it. There we are. Make sure that we're clicking at the top of the group and playing everything within that group. Now let's make a new cue with a music track. So we create a new group by clicking up here or by pressing command and zero. And we've got a new group that it's put in there. I'm just going to drag it down. So it's in there. And then there we are. So we're in our new group there. Now we want to find the piece of music that I want to use and drag it in. So I'm going to find that folder. Here's the folder QLab sound cues. And let's go for dance track. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it into that group. Has it gone into the group? Yes, it has, because there's a green box around it. So first of all, I want to rename it. So we know what that cue is. And what I can do here is I can click on it and I can play it. And there goes that track. But let's imagine that I want it to be a bit quieter. So I'm going to press escape to stop there. And to do this with the track selected, we click down the bottom here at audio levels. And then what we've got is we've got a few faders, but this one on the left is the, is the most important one. This is our master fader. So it's currently at zero, which means the track is going to play at the file volume just at the, the, the set volume that it is. But what I can do is I can click on this yellow tab and drag it down to whatever volume level I want. Or I can click at the bottom here and I can manually enter what I want. So I want it to be minus 10 and try something like that. Let's click on the track and see how that sounds. There we are, great. So it's, it's a little bit quieter. Let's imagine that that's the volume that we need it to be. But let's now say that I want to fade in this piece of music. I don't want it to start loud. I want it to start quiet and fade in. So we need to use something called a fade cue. Now to insert a fade cue, we can click this button at the top or we can press command and seven. So I'm going to press that and there it is. It's put in a fade cue and I'm going to drag that into the group. So we've got in this group here, we've got the track and the fade cue. So now I need to tell the fade cue what track it's targeting. What is it fading? So we do this by clicking on the target track and dragging it into the fade queue like so. Now it knows. Or alternatively, I can drag the fade queue onto the track. Either way, it doesn't matter. Now, these red crosses on the left hand side means that parameters need to be set. There's a problem here that we need to solve. In other words, the fade queue, it knows what it's what track it's targeting, but it needs to be told what to do. So we're going to click on the fade queue and then we're going to click on audio levels at the bottom and say we want to fade the music up to minus 10 dB. So we're going to click on the master here and we're going to type in minus 10. So that's what it's fading it to. Then we need to set over what time period we want. So we can press D on the keyboard 
and type in a number. This has come up here with the action. So we could say three, if I type in three, it'll come up three seconds or I press D again. If I can press five, it will be five seconds. You can also change how long it is by clicking on curve shape and clicking down here, clicking and entering whatever time we want down here. Or we can click up here where action and change it or we can press D and there we go, we can change it. So let's go with five seconds. But finally, we need to set the volume of the track initially to the bottom. So we'll have the track starting at nothing and then the fade cue will bring it up to minus 10 dB over five seconds. So I'm gonna drag this down to the bottom. So it's currently playing at nothing. The track and the fade cue do need to be in the same group here because it's, they're gonna happen simultaneously. That's what that earlier setting about start all children simultaneously meant. So let's give this a go. We have the track here, we have the fade cue here, and they're in the same group. I'm gonna click at the top of the group and that's gonna play everything in this group and let's see what happens. And there we go, the track faded into minus 10 dB over five seconds. We can then apply a fade out by adding a new group and a new fade cue. So let's title this so we know what it's doing. Fade out dance track. And then we add a new fade cue. We need to drag it into that group so it's part of that group. Now we need to tell it what to target. So we want it to target this dance track so we know what it's doing. And now we need to tell it what to do specifically. So we could say it's we want it to fade down over three seconds. Now let's go for five seconds. So we've got a five second fade out on this track. We then click on audio levels and we want to make sure it's an absolute fade, not a relative one. So make sure it's an absolute fade. We also want to click on this, stop target when done. That means that after the fade is complete, it's gonna stop the music track, which is what we want. We don't want it to keep playing silently. And then we need to set here by clicking on the master fader, make sure it says minus imp, make sure it's yellow and minus imp. So we're if it goes to this, that's not, that's not active because we've still got red crosses. We need to make sure we click on it until it says minus imp. So we've got it fading out over five seconds and it's gonna stop when it's done to minus imp. Let's give that a go. Here we go. Here it comes we've got the fade in working. And let's give this fade out a go. Very good, so that's worked. Now what happens if I accidentally double tap space bar? So QLab plays two cues at once. Uh, so let's, let's see what happens. So if I hit dance track, and then I accidentally hit the next cue. If you look up into the le top left hand of the screen, you'll see what happens, it flashes red. And this is because we set up that setting earlier where we set the minimum go time to 0.5 seconds. Now this is a really handy thing just to prevent the accidental double tap. So if I accidentally hit it within half a second, it's gonna flash red and it's gonna realize that it's an accident. So it's not gonna allow me to do cue the next track before half a second. And finally, let's save this workspace. So how do we save our work? We go up to here, we click on file and we click on save as or click bundle workspace. What bundling is, is it puts the QLab file and all the audio files from that QLab file into one place. So this keeps things neat and tidy so the computer isn't overworking by loading files from all over the computer from different folders, different drives and so on. So choose where you want to save it. Actually, let's go for a bundle. So let's go file and we're going to go for a bundle workspace. So yeah, we're going to choose where to save it. For now, we can put it on, uh, let's put it in this QLab sound cues and we're going to call it uh, session one. Fantastic. So we know it's going there and I'm going to click save and then it's going to be saving it. And there we are. And it just pops up a new one to show that it's complete. So then we can have a look if we go to that folder here we are, we've got session one in its own folder. I click that to open it and we've got the QLab file, but we've also got this audio file. And there we are, and what it's done is it's saved those audio tracks in that one place. So it's keeping everything nice and neat 
and tidy. And there we are, some basics of setting up and getting started with QLab. Make sure that you check out the other QLab videos for other tips and tricks. And if you're stuck, go on the QLab website where there are walkthrough guides and instructions with pretty much every single component of the software. You can email them, there's FAQs, there's loads and loads of tips and handy walkthroughs on there. So do check that out. Great, all the best, good luck. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you, please give it a like. Do check out these other videos and subscribe. And if you want to support what I do and the channel, you can click on the link in the video description. All the best.